Research has shown that most people who come here for the first time is purely because of the monster. People that come up here, I'm sure they're all hoping to see something. They would love to see something. The main thing that they're looking for is either the head and neck or the hump. For 1,400 years, people have talked of a mysterious creature living in the dark depths of Loch Ness. Actual sightings are rare, but that will soon change. Our job is creating illusion, and a Loch Ness monster is another one of those you know, archetypal myths that would be great to have a go at, really. There have always been the believers it's something that's alive. and the skeptics. It's a rock. But is it possible, using state-of-the-art animatronics, to build a monster that will convince them all? We challenged a crack team of experts in movie special effects to do just that, and followed them as they struggled to turn the legend of the Loch Ness Monster into reality. An industrial estate in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, 500 miles south of Loch Ness. Behind these anonymous doors, strange beasts lurk. Jez Harris makes monsters for the movies. Everything from dinosaurs to dragons, even werewolves. But he and his team now face their toughest test yet. To build a creature so lifelike it can pull off the ultimate Loch Ness Monster hoax. This is going to be quite a challenge, this project. If you're in the studio, the team around you makes everything much more controllable because it's just for the camera. But this time we're, we're out in the middle of a loch and we've got to keep everything secret. So the whole team getting the creature in the water, moving under the water, raising up and performing live is going to be tricky. And then it's going to disappear below the water and no one's to be seen around it. So it's quite a challenge, quite a challenge. Previous hoaxes have had it easy. With no witnesses, they've used everything from car tires to bales of hay, taken a photo and presented it as proof. Jez and his team face a far tougher test to build a creature so lifelike that it will convince people they are actually seeing the monster with their own eyes. It's never been done before. They're basing their design on a plesiosaurus, an awesome predatory reptile that lived on Earth millions of years ago. They've nicknamed their monster Lucy. But there's just one more small problem. They've got just 14 weeks to bring Lucy to life. They have to be in the lock before the tourist season ends in September. Or there'll be no one to see it. This is where Lucy will make her public debut in a few months' time. Loch Ness was formed during the Ice Age over 10,000 years ago. It's Britain's biggest lake, 23 miles long and over 900 feet deep. Deeper than the North Sea and pitch black from just a few feet down. An eerie place and the perfect habitat for a monster that's become a legend around the world. For some, watching the lock has become a way of life. Adrian Shine and Dick Rayner have, between them, spent nearly 80 years investigating the monster phenomenon. The Loch Ness Monster is probably the most popular uh, monster story in the Western world. People say they come to see the scenery, but uh, secretly they're hoping they'll see something strange in the water, I'm sure. Loch Ness has features which certainly make it more than likely you will see monsters of some sort or another because it, is, it has its own illusions. The water is very dark and peaty and the hills close in on it. And so you have large bands of reflection. It is a vast body of water. 
Operating a 15-foot, three-quarter ton robotic model in the lock without being rumbled is going to be tricky and potentially dangerous. To help them, the team have recruited James Wakeford to mastermind the operation. He's an ex-Marine commando and a specialist in underwater and covert operations. Perfectly qualified for the difficult mission ahead. It's one of those things with me, the moment something gets quite exciting, the moment it sort of starts to bring back all the feelings of my past background in the military, all those elements of, you know, doing things and trying to get away with them, and, and you know, it was quite exciting. It's not going to be simple. Um, and also we're testing something that's never been done before. That's exciting. You know, it's a challenge really, isn't it? I mean, that's the challenge of it, which, you know, is getting me going. To help mastermind the operation, James has brought in an old friend, South African Michael Thorpe, a professional diver who's used to diving with sharks. But that is nothing compared to the dangers they will face in the murky, deep waters of Loch Ness. If there's an emergency, it's going to be getting deeper and darker very quickly. Um, and of course, as we're going deeper, it's going to get colder too. For the hoax to succeed, they'll need a secluded base by the lock where they can work unseen. James and Michael have heard about a holiday home that's available for rent exactly when they need it. Well, here's a house, look at that. Dark. Beautiful. And it is the best spot to do this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no other options, really. It has to and it is tucked away, it's yeah. perfect. It is perfect. Nine weeks to go, and back in Aylesbury, the clock is ticking. Jez and his team are making good progress with Lucy the monster. The original sculpture has been finished, and we've made a mold of it. And when we take this apart, the original sculpture will be completely destroyed. Um, but from this mold, we'll then make the outer form of the creature. As you can see, all the texture here from the original sculpture comes through onto the negative mold. With the moulds complete, they're ready to be filled with a rubbery mixture. A few days later, and the moulds are broken open. It's the moment of truth. So this should be exciting. Look at that. Good, eh? So what do you think? Amazing. Amazing. Soft, warm and wobbly. Wow. Do you know what it is really weird is this because it's warm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It is it's uh... quite thin. <laughs> That's very strange. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. And if I saw that from a dis I mean from any distance, you'd just be completely convinced that it's just no way you wouldn't be, you know? Just imagine that coming in. Yeah. I would shit myself. <laughs> With Lucy fast becoming a reality, the team now face a major problem. How are they going to maneuver her in the water without being seen? There's now just seven weeks to go before the man made monster is due in Loch Ness. Work on the model, nicknamed Lucy, has been going well, but it's slipping behind schedule because one vital piece of equipment is weeks overdue. Today, it finally arrives. We've been waiting quite a few weeks now for it and there's so much we've got to do with it. Time's running out, so a bit of pressure on. There we go. It is, actually. <laughs> The submarine, bought unseen on the internet, yeah. will be attached underneath Lucy to move her through the water. Oh, it's it, really. But it's hardly the high-tech piece of kit they expected. Um, ah. It's pretty primitive, to be <laughs> honest. Eh? Um, very basic. I didn't expect it to be this rough inside. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's sort of... It's sort of Pieces, pieces sort of lying around and pretty basic. And there's more bad news. Whoa! That's a major little crack. <laughs> That's not a little bit of filler. Fair bit of work, I'd say, Jez. The more they look, 
the more problems they find. Until they're fixed, nothing can go ahead. And they're due in Loch Ness in just a month and a half. Time is running out. The team are well aware that if they fail, it's not just their reputation on the line. Because there's a long and illustrious tradition of Loch Ness hoaxes to live up to. In 1933, the Daily Mail sponsored a big game hunter, Marmaduke Weatherall, to track down the elusive monster. Loch Ness, on which the eyes of the world are focused, the reputed haunt of a prehistoric monster or monsters, and the newly found adventure ground of modern Gullivers. Mr. Weatherall, the big game hunter and his party, who have been hot on the trail of the monster for some time, set out from fires to comb the lake. Although the fearless hunter found no monster, he did discover strange footprints on the shore of the loch. But it was soon exposed as a con. Weatherall had made them himself using a hippo's foot. His scam gave birth to a new Scottish tradition, hoaxing the Nessie hunters. And this picture is the most famous hoax of all. The so-called surgeon's photo supposedly taken in 1934 by a Harley Street doctor on holiday. It caused a sensation. And for the next 60 years, people argued over its authenticity. Until 1994, when the truth was finally revealed. We found the man who did it. His name was Christian Sperling. He was the stepson of Marmaduke Wetherill, who was a, a flamboyant hoaxer of the 1930s. And he'd made a small model based on a a submarine um, model. And it had been photographed just a few feet out in the water. And it, it's a beautiful picture. It's an absolute classic. And I think it will always be the Loch Ness Monster, even though we actually dismiss it uh, as evidence. But Jez and his team can't rely on a grainy photo as proof of their sighting. They want to engineer a live mass sighting that lasts for minutes and will survive the scrutiny of anyone's camera. Well done, guys. This is really, really good. However, with the deadline looming, their plan is looking harder and harder to achieve. Finally, with five weeks to go, at last there's some good news for James, who is in charge of the diving operation, and his colleague, Michael. Weeks behind schedule, the sub has finally been fixed. She's done, eh? She's just come back. And she now has a new camouflage paint job. Wow. It really looks suitable for COVID op now, eh? Yeah. That's nice. Definitely the colour. Yeah. All they have to do now is learn how to operate it. They've come to a lake near the workshop for lessons from expert submariner Alan Whitfield. Morning. I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. James, how are you going? James. Good morning. With James as diving supervisor, it's down to Michael to pilot the sub. Alan is going to put him through his paces. Okay. All looks good. OK, so, so you've got control. Well, first of all, just have a little play. Let's spin and put it in. Yeah. Just Here we go. Good to see it working, huh? See it actually moving along. If that's not full speed. <laughs> Is that propeller turning? Can you see? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Michael's little face. <laughs> Looking out the window. <laughs> For a man who's tackled most diving challenges, Michael appears apprehensive. The Saab is open bottom to allow a quick escape. But once Lucy's fixed on top, there'll be no room for error. The Saab will have to be totally controllable to allow Michael to hover just a few feet below the surface. I'm trying a little bit of thrust down. OK, a little bit of thrust down. Just take it down a little if you keep thrusting. Well, actually, we thrust it actually a bit too long there. Yeah. Now, if you look, we're, we're coming up. Aha. So it's thrust down again. It is very, very tricky to control the buoyancy on that thing. Uh, pretty frustrating, actually. I think it's going to be very difficult to hover at five or six feet. 
she's just very, very delicate. She's so twitchy, you just have to put the tiniest bit of air in it and she just shoots the surface. It's gonna be very, very difficult. I'm not sure how we're gonna do it, to be honest. Back at Aylesbury, things are getting desperate. They've lost valuable time fixing the sub. There's still two weeks' worth of work to do on Lucy's animatronics. Trouble is, they have only seven days before testing is due to start. The team will need to work round the clock to stand any chance of making it in time. It's totally mad. It's a mad old business to be in at the best of times. But this particular event is quite mad. We've got an awful lot on our plate. We've done strange things, but not quite like this one. It's going to be interesting. Everyone's exhausted, and they know the real work hasn't even begun. A secret location somewhere in the west of England. This flooded quarry was once a high security test site for the Ministry of Defense. It's where Lucy the Monster will rehearse her starring role. In just three weeks, she has to perform in Loch Ness. The pressure is now on James, in charge of the diving operations, and his dive master, Michael. Yeah, it's looking quite good now, isn't it? It's looking more like the job as opposed to some little sort of funny sub. No, it's good. They've done a good job, actually, considering the time they had. For the hoax to work, they have to make Lucy behave in the water like a real-life living creature. To help them, they've recruited a team of divers. Chris, Glenn, Ross, and Toomey. None of them have been told the true nature of their mission. Three days late, Lucy has finally arrived, and they're about to find out. We're about to meet Jez, who's just strolling in there. Hi, Look yeah. at him. How are you doing? All right, mate. All right. Hi. Um, so basically, uh, this is what we've been waiting for. Basically, we're going to. <laughs> Where are we going, Glenn? I should think we're going to. Uh... Scotland, maybe? Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. This is Lucy. She's our Lucy. plesiosaur, our Loch Ness Monster. And uh, she's going to strap to the top of the sub and hang underneath the boat, <clears throat> we hope. It's all very exciting. And at last, we're here. So come and feel that. Come and feel it. Feel that means. Meet and greet. Yeah. Ooh, she's sticky. That's them convinced now. Made in the jaw. Fantastic. So pretty. Have we got to turn on the head? Yeah. Operating Lucy on dry land is one thing. Getting her to work in the water with the sub is quite another. James is going to have to rely on his team of divers if they're to stand a chance of pulling it off. I enjoy the challenge of building that team. It's just great. You know what I mean? It's a team effort. That's perfect, huh? I think I'm pretty happy with that. Why don't we swim around and see if we can position on the sub? We're going to position Lucy on the top, which uh, should be good. Finally, all coming together. Nothing like this has ever been tried before. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Look at that. Nice hump. And James is worried about safety. He's decided two divers must escort Lucy and the sub in case something goes wrong. Joining Michael in the sub is Stuart, an animatronics expert who will operate the monster. Can go for a neck raise, please. A neck raise. Neck raise. Ooh, very nice. And now a head turn and a mouth shut. Oh yeah, now we like it. In your own time, Mike, if you now want to go into reverse uh, on your thrusters. She's coming around nicely, Mike, she's coming around. Reduce speed on port, more on starboard. Now 
now you're talking. And a little bit more speed, but she's off. Standing by for manoeuvres. Stuart, can you do some neck movements for us, please? Jerky, isn't it, Jazz? To solve that. It's pretty cool, though, from here. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful, that's what I want to see. I think it's going quite well. It, I'm actually feeling quite confident now. Good effort. Very happy. There's some fine tuning to do on the buoyancy and animatronics, but Lucy's maiden voyage has exceeded everyone's expectations. James decides to push it further and try a dive. Both engines forward in that position. Both engines forward. Down you go, down you go, and the dive. It's nice. You have left the surface, you've left the surface, do a count of 10 and then drive back up and a little bit of air in Lucy. Come up to the surface now, please. Up you come, dive up, a little bit of air in Lucy, please. There we go. Come to the surface, please. Mike, bring her to the surface, please, nice and slowly. Coming back, coming down. Mike, bring it up. Sub to surface, sub to surface. Sub to surface, sub to surface. Divers one and two, do you have sub in the visual? Sub to surface. Sub to surface. Diver one, is that sub? Woo. Okay, divers one and two, if you can do an emergency assist for the divers out, please, over. Visual, get visual, get the two divers out, please, over. The sub has sunk and is lying over 80 feet down and flooding rapidly. Michael and Stuart each carry less than a minute's emergency air supply, so they need to get out fast. Bring the two passengers to the surface, please, on a controlled ascent. A controlled ascent. Bring the two passengers to the surface on a controlled ascent. OK, so passenger on surface. down the rocks a little bit, bumping side side like that, and then hit the bottom, and then slid a bit more, and then hit the bottom. The cockpit had about that much air in it, right at the top. Um, but we're out, we're nearly out of main air, so we flooded the cockpit with the reserve, but it's not going to move. <laughs> you all right? That was good. It was, eh? <laughs> There's all action stations for a minute down there. Okay, I'm going to go for a big cup of tea now. Just calm my jangling nerves. <laughs> if this had happened in the dark, 900 feet deep waters of Loch Ness, the outcome could have been very different. This time, Michael and Stuart are OK. But if Lucy or the sub are damaged, it could spell the end of the mission. And months of hard work will count for nothing.
It's late August, peak tourist time at Loch Ness. The team and their monster have to be here in the next 10 days before the season ends. The Loch Ness legend attracts thousands of visitors from around the world and generates millions in revenue. It's no coincidence that someone from the tourist industry started Monster Mania back in the 1930s. In May 33, the people who ran the Drum the Drocket Hotel said they'd seen something strange in the water and uh, the local newspaper got hold of it and uh, they said if it's as big as it seems, we can't just call it a creature, it must be a real monster. And that was the first time that the, the word monster had been used which happened to be exactly two months after the movie King Kong opened. People do want to believe in monsters. Some people really need to believe that there's something strange in Loch Ness. Back at the secret test site, the team's monster is proving just as elusive as the real thing. Both it and the sub are lying 80 feet down at the bottom of the reservoir. The rescue plan for Nessie shows she made a bolt for freedom. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny thing is, everyone's like panicking. I mean, you know, we know where she is. It's not like we've lost her in the middle of uh, Loch Ness, which is handy. To recover the sub and Lucy, the divers are using an enormous lift bag, which they will attach and then inflate with air. Diver one leaving the surface. Surface to diver one. Divers one and two, confirmed. Sub is on the surface. Stand clear. Divers one and two, sub is on the surface and remaining there. With time running out fast, the recovery efforts go on well into the night and things don't look good. It's looking wounded. A bit of a scar across the back here. And uh, an eyeball has popped. So she's winking. She seems to want to keep her mystery, doesn't she? Right, 14 so weeks of work, up. and she makes a dive for it. I want to know about that. I mean, she didn't arrive like that. It looks like she's broken her neck. She's just moving very freely in a kind of <laughs> broken neck <laughs> way. <laughs> it is fixable. Um, again, it's just a bit of time to do it. Back at the workshop, urgent repairs on Lucy get underway. But closer inspection shows the sub has also come off badly. I am very concerned. Both the motors are completely flooded. We've had water in the battery box up to the terminals. Uh, it could be pretty major. It could be a complete write-off. All that water has just come straight out of the motor. Um, motors don't usually run very well with water in them. I didn't like that one, did it? <laughs> Uh, well, mine is one speed control. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw the flames licking around cars. Well, if this works, it gives us a fighting chance. Yeah. The repairs have cost vital testing time. And there's still a lot to do to master the control of Lucy and the sub in the water. There's just one week left until they're due at Loch Ness. Though time is precious, James puts safety first and insists on testing the newly repaired sub before he'll risk attaching Lucy. Say again. We have lost power. Uh, roger that. Uh, the cockpit. Uh, the cockpit. 
Uh, Mike, uh, leave it on and exit the cockpit. Smoke in the cockpit. <coughs> Everything was going very smoothly. Then I had a complete power failure. So I came back to the surface and smoke was pouring out the uh, breaker switch hole. So I just shut everything down and uh, came out. It was, getting, it was getting pretty unpleasant in there, actually. <sighs> there was only one thing I hadn't done to the sub so far, and that was burn it. And uh, I think it's burning as we speak. <laughs> With just three days left, James has no choice other than to scrap the sub. It's one of those decisions I had to make sooner or later, right sooner rather than later, that it's just not going to work. The initial idea for the submarine was a safe working platform and it was a floating death trap. With the sub banished to the corner of the car park, the team now face a mammoth problem. How do they manoeuvre Lucy in the water? Luckily, James has a plan. Um, let's think about this. You could put that size tube in there, couldn't you? Let's just leave that there for a moment. Let's just try that then, huh? Let it go. Put it go. Let's just give it a go, right? The idea is to use an underwater rig attached to Lucy and operated by three divers. We can get all from here. The bull with two hands from there. This time, James is taking no chances. He's determined she won't sink. More buoyancy things. The team know this is their last chance. They have just two days to make and perfect the new rig before they have to leave for Scotland and the uncharted waters of Loch Ness. Michael, now without his sub, has a new job. Basically, I'm going to be lying down on this ladder, operating everything like that. I'm going to do the reveal, drop my hands down, and do the run home. Looks good, eh? Looks good, huh? So hopefully the buoyancy is just about right, and uh, now they're going to go for some runs. With Michael working the animatronics, the other two divers will use motors attached to the frame to dive, surface, and drive Lucy through the water. OK, guys, so basically, it's up to you. You're the divers. You're in charge. You're ready to go. Mike is going to come down, and then I'd obviously like you to turn her through 180 degrees. At long last, it's the moment of truth. So here we go. First run. That's a good line there, good line there. You're on your own, guys. That's a good course there. Try and keep that course. She's just about to go under. She's under the water now. Here we go. Here we go. After 14 nerve-wracking and exhausting weeks, Lucy has come to life. Look at that. That's just beautiful, huh? We're just sneaking up very quietly in front of us. It's a please us all. And her name is Lucy. This is the first time one has ever been recorded on camera. We're so lucky to be there. Spectacular. It's 
just looks like something frolicking in the water, doesn't it? It's brilliant. I'm very pleased. It's um, come together very well. I think we can refine it, definitely, and this is going to work beautifully. She looks great. Looks really good. Very promising. I'm very happy. At last. <laughs> just to let you know that we've got 50 bar left, so we're bringing her in. Just head back about nine degrees to port, back towards us, and uh, let's call that a day. That's a great day. It went really well. Um, it was easy to handle, easy to operate. Everything went really smoothly, actually. I think they're going to rock. It felt, it felt good. It felt good. It felt safe. With just hours to go, they've cracked it. The last minute trials have gone better than anyone dared hope, but there's no time for further tests. Tomorrow, they hit the road for Scotland. Next time Lucy takes to the water, it'll be for real. It's quite exciting, really. Very exciting. <laughs> The months of building, testing and worrying are over. The team has a 500-mile drive ahead of them to Scotland and Loch Ness. Lucy is finally going home. Point Clare, on the northern shore of Loch Ness, the team's base for the next 14 days. From now on, everything will be done in total secrecy. If the real reason for their visit is discovered, months of painstaking work will be wasted. After the clear, safe waters of the test facility, it's their first chance to try conditions in the lock. Uh, the purpose of today's dive is basically to give everyone a, a feel what it's like under the, under the water here, the visibility, the temperature. I've got so many layers on underneath my dry suit. If I'm cold, there's nothing I can do about it, ever. I can't fit any more clothes on. The high peat content of the water means visibility below the surface is poor and far from ideal for diving. It just had this brown, sort of dim glow. And uh, that was very weird. Yeah. We both said that we both went, what was it like? They went, eerie. It's like, it, it is an eerie feeling, down not it? And it was, yeah, it was eerie enough. Seven in, in 28 All right, I, I kept looking about and thinking something was going to come out of yeah. the darkness and <laughs> get <all> right. me. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I'll admit. <laughs> Just half a mile from the team's base is the first target for a reveal of Lucy, a campsite on the shore of the lock. But they need to know when people are around, so a member of the team, Joe Ralling and her family, go undercover pretending to be campers. So how's the campsite? There's all the pitches up the front yeah, by yeah. the water, and then the static homes, there are probably five or six of them. I mean, I think we can do it, but I think we're gonna have a work cut out. There's no time to waste. James decides to go for a reveal as soon as possible. But first, they have to get Lucy and the diving rig in the water without being spotted. It will require an operation of military precision. OK, 6.30, a dive equipment check um, and all equipment down to South Beach. And 7 o'clock, let's bring Lucy down there as well. Jez. Carl, Stuart, and anyone else will basically then lower Lucy to the beach area. Now, it could be quite tricky, you know, I mean, it's rocks and all sorts of stuff. Shh, secret square on. Covert. 
but obviously what I'm trying to do is get her into the water as quickly as possible. It's going to be good fun tonight, you know, starting to get the gear in, starting to G it up, and right, here we are, this is, this is it for real. I can't even see you. Under cover of darkness, the divers prepare to take Lucy into the lock for the first time. Obviously, it's going to be a little messing around, but this is the real McCoy now, so they're a little bit nervous and a bit tension. Divers listen around, yeah? The next stage is obviously down to you guys. She's obviously almost there. Once we take these covers off, she's down to you guys. Chances are they're doing it as fast as they can, because they're absolutely terrified. <laughs> the divers guide Lucy into the lock and tie her to an underwater mooring just off the shore, ready for tomorrow. Essentially, it's uh, winter playing rock and roll, haven't it? Yeah. Good. Like a good Very operation. Good. Went smoothly. It's pretty it's good. It's really good, good effect. Get your air, guys. Uh, I climbed up to the front when we finished mm. just to see what uh, yeah. see what she looked like underwater, you know, because yeah. you can imagine you swimming underneath there and you come across that. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be a swimmer. <laughs> After months of toil and trouble, tomorrow is the moment of truth. Early September on Loch Ness. A plastic bottle is the only clue to the secret underwater location of Lucy, a 15-foot animatronic monster. After months of hard work and setbacks, she finally faces the ultimate test. Can Lucy and the dive team convince an unsuspecting public they've seen the real thing. People up here, the you know, tourists that come up here, I'm sure they're all hoping to see something. They would love to see something. And um, I'm sure most of them are complete unbelievers, but there will be some who are really hoping to see something special. Um, and I hope we can uh, do it for them. James Wakeford, ex-Marine commando and specialist in covert operations, is in charge. When you get out to a point, you'll hear me say, go for reveals. Let's get a visual, you know what I mean? We spend all this time, let's get someone to see that hump. I'm uh, a little bit nervous, but, but very excited at the same time. Looking forward to it, actually. All this excitement. Yeah. We've got it all planned out. We've uh, gone over this and over this. Just like, discussed it between ourselves and with James. I think it should, uh, I think it should go well. It's going to be a buzz again. But there's no buzz yet at the campsite, where the tourists are still out sightseeing. Yeah. James, we're in a bit of a quandary here. Right now, there are a couple of people fussing around, but unless I start to jump up and down and yelling, I don't think anyone's going to see. Well, the divers are in the water, I mean, just sitting here. I mean, we don't mind sitting here. I mean, we'll wait here for another... I reckon we should maybe leave it for another 20 minutes before the light sort of really goes. OK. Bye. The daylight is fading fast. It is just beginning to get dusky. The light is fading. Can you tell Joe we're ready now? <laughs> oh, hello. There's some movement. Definitely some people turn up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks like they've started a little barbecue or something. Get on standby, guys. Stand by. Stand by, seriously. Hello. Okay, we'll go for it. Divers. To go. Diver one and two, port 10 degrees. Diver one, port 90 degrees, you are on Lucy. The operation is a go. Divers, are you ready? Divers, starboard 30 degrees, starboard 30 degrees.
Thank you. 20 yards past the point. That's absolutely amazing. Joe captures the reaction at the campsite with a hidden camera. Can you see it? You can't make out what it is, but it's definitely moving. It's hard to get perspective, mm -hmm. isn't it? But it went behind that boy. Yeah. So we know but, it's but, as far but that away boy, as the boy is. That boy isn't very big. I mean, big. the log would be massive. Yeah. That was no log. That's a good question. Add air, come on up. It's been a perfect first reveal. But as they make their way back to Lucy's underwater mooring, something goes wrong. A diver three, add air and come up. A diver suddenly appears on the surface. A diver's confirm. have you lost her? <laughs> yeah, it looks like we've lost her. Divers, are you all well? Return to surface in your own time. Decompression as required, slow ascent and return to base. So she obviously went down. She's gone. Uh, Ross, are you okay? He's not. Ross isn't okay. In you go, Trini. In you go. In you go. Go for him. Go for him, Trini. Quickly, quickly. Get him. Get him. Get him. Uh, to the house. Anyone in the house? Please dial 999. Diving medical emergency. Call an ambulance. Oh, Dave? Yep. Go over here. Call an ambulance. Oh, get the OTS coming. Come on! Out to him! Get the edge in! Okay. Get the edge in! Okay. You're off, Joss. Oh, no. He's on oxygen now. He's getting to the point where he's getting to the point where he's getting to the point where he's getting to it threw us up and well, threw me up in the air like that. It was gone like that. We weren't expecting what happened. I just remember getting pulled like that as she dropped down backwards, um, and getting jammed up underneath her fin. You couldn't let go. You're doing everything to hold on to try and to reach that air back. I remember just. It, thrown out to one side and instantly been face face down just in the in the stones. And that was about 24 metres. Uh, I was told uh, not to show my emotion in front of other divers, <laughs> but uh, it was quite scary. James fears Ross has surfaced too quickly and suffered an attack of the bends. As a precaution, he's taken to hospital for observation. The incident is a stark reminder of just how dangerous this place can be, even for the most experienced divers. Next morning, there's some good news. Ross is back. Luckily, it wasn't the bends, as James feared, but a muscular spasm brought on by Lucy's rapid descent to the bottom. Sorry, guys. I suck. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all very much. Thanks for towing me back in. <laughs> Thanks for carrying my lardy ass up to Steps Glen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a scary little moment. Yeah. I'd like to go to bed now. 
<laughs> Sorry, Jez. <laughs> Just couldn't hold on. <laughs> Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. Dude. No, I'm bad. <laughs> Cheers. All right. At the campsite, they know nothing of last night's drama after the sighting. Lucy may have sunk, but not before making her mark. This is exactly where we were stood, actually. Yeah, this is a bit further up we actually went. So we started looking, and it was just like, there. You looking at it, thinking, oh, am I really seeing yeah. something? Now, there was just a couple of little humps, and then gradually they were moving. Well, I have to say that I think it was probably just sort of colouring in the water and maybe sort of like a, a certain type of fish in a big gathering, a big swarm of fish, something like that. Rubbish! Um, that's what I that's think. No, you didn't say that last night. I mean, one of the reasons we came here was because you wanted to <laughs> go Nessie's spot, wasn't it? <laughs> You've been waxing lyrical about the, the whole yeah. legend all, all, all no, week, haven't you? I don't know what I saw. I, I know I saw something that wasn't 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 man, man made. Definitely. The hoax has worked. Lucy has passed her first test with flying colours, but sadly, she now lies lost beneath the dark, deep waters. If she can't be found, Operation Loch Ness could be over, almost before it's begun. Finding Lucy in the dark, peaty waters of the lock won't be easy. It could take days, or she might even be impossible to find. And time is fast running out. After months of hard work and dangerous mishaps, the frustration is starting to show. But Jez, who built Lucy, has a cunning plan up his sleeve. We've got to get more sightings in. So, just to play safe, we built a little something back in the workshop. She made from the same body, the same, same mold. Yeah. 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 Looks good to me. Well, like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to go down and practice with the hump. So what we're going to do is Michael's going to go out front with the sea dude, and we're going to put Glenn in behind, um, dressed as a hump. <laughs> I'll do my best humping that I could possibly do. <laughs> I haven't seen Glenn humping before, and uh, he's going to be behind me, so... <laughs> Maybe you'll be getting the hump. <laughs> Diver one, proceed. Diver two, proceed. Pretty fast, eh? Quite cool, that's good. It's great. Pretty very nice. The team are ready to launch another sighting. The waters around Urquhart Castle have long been a prime location for Nessie hoaxes. Today's mock battle means one of the best days of the year for tourists. Little do they know that just around the bay, the dive team are preparing some unscheduled entertainment. Good. Divers, stay when ready. Bravo, I'm ready. That is perfect position. It's like a hump on something. Yeah. It's actually moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely something. moving, yeah. Whatever it is. It's kind of creepy how it plays tricks on your eyes because there's something definitely moving out there. I wish I had a pair of binoculars. It's certainly interesting. Yeah, everybody up there is taking a look at it. Mudster. It just under the water just now. That is mad. It's a rock. <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't a rock. <laughs> it's something that's alive. It just yeah. went really smooth. So the water across there. Flat, didn't it? And it went really flat like this here. Yeah, now. It was bigger than a seal. It was grey, hump-shaped. I'm not sure. 
I certainly believe in, a bit, in this a bit yeah. more than I did an hour ago. <laughs> say that much. What a beautiful pump you make, Michael. That was absolutely That was brilliant, guys. Stunning. Brilliant. That'll be your well, that'll be your piece that you put in your CV. <laughs> <laughs> the mission has gone like a dream. But what about the reactions? There was a lot of people looking, pointing, and it started to get a buzz about it. One person said, it's a rock. <laughs> well, it's moving. <laughs> Looks like a rock. <laughs> right. You saw the hump in the water moving? Yeah. <laughs> Swimming? It's around the corner. Change directions? We were standing up on the top of the hill, and we seen it just go across the front there. But I've always wanted to spot it. It just looked like a living thing in the water, didn't it? So we've seen something that we can't explain. I don't know. It's, ex it's exciting, really. Another success, but only with Lucy's understudy. With just a week left, the team are determined to find their animatronic monster deep down in the lock. With a bit of improvisation, they've designed their very own monster hunter. We're rigging up a shot line here with one meter increments. On the end of the shot line, we're going to have a C magnet, with, uh, which will hopefully latch onto a frame, and a little infrared camera above it so we get an image of it. We go fishing for Lucy. Nice afternoon for it. Nice weekend, George. And uh, you never know, we might find a supermarket trolley. You always do. I have got a very nice magnet. We've got about a one foot visual. We can see about a foot from the uh, camera to the magnet and a little bit of beyond it. We can hardly see anything now. Right, I've got a clear view of the bottom. A I'm on the ladder beam. We are on the ladder beam. There's another beam next. That is Michael Cedo and it's upside down. Feels like I've uh, got some metal there. Yep. Hang in. on. Can you see here? I don't want to pull it uh, off. Uh, it feels quite again. solid actually. Yep. Yeah, I've definitely got it. That is definitely her. I can see a flipper. We have found her. The failing light and foul weather are hardly ideal conditions for monster hunting, but at least it helps conceal the operation from the shore. The team are lucky. Though she's upside down, Lucy is lying in only a hundred feet of water. It should be possible to bring her up. Once back on the surface, there's even more encouraging news. Closer inspection shows Lucy is undamaged. It's great to see her underwater in that sort of whiskey coloured water, bits of her looming out of it. I have got quite attached to her now. She's certainly got a personality and she's desperate to get away from us. Um, but no, it's, it's very nice to see her back with us again. Now the team are determined to go for their most ambitious target yet. A mass sighting by a boatload of would-be Nessie hunters. Every day, the Royal Scot takes would-be Nessie hunters out onto the lock. It's been specially designed for monster spotting. Equipped with sonar and cameras to detect anything in the water. Over the years, it's clocked up more than its fair share of sightings, thanks to the expert skills of Ricky MacDonald, who knows every inch of these waters. On this boat, actually, in the last 13 years, we've had 87 large contacts. The bigger one was about 20 feet in length, say six meters, just short of, and about five feet in height, roughly about a meter 50 high. All I saw at that point was something about the size of my hand. 
but then again, something the size of my hand is not going to create an eight foot or two and a half meter wash. So therefore, there must have been something a lot bigger subsurface. We've actually got 18 large animate objects in Loch Ness right now of a uh, reptilian variety, but warm-blooded. The team want to put Lucy to the ultimate test and bring her up in front of the Royal Scot. But to do it, they'll need the boat to stop, and that will need Ricky's cooperation. They decide to risk all and take him into their confidence. He's about to meet Lucy for the first time, but will his expert eye be convinced? Not bad at all. What length have you got on this? About what? 16. 16 feet. Yeah, the average is 18. That's pretty, they're pretty good there. The biggest one's 37. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Ricky agrees to play along. So with only two days left, James and his divers prepare for the big one. Yeah, I just want to get going, I just want to crack on. James is worried Lucy might sink again. So for the diver's safety, he's decided to confine her to shallower waters. Ricky has agreed to bring the Royal Scot in towards the shore on the pretext of showing his passengers the only island on the lock. This will be the cue for Lucy to reveal herself. So basically, this is the track that uh, the Royal Scot takes now. And it comes along here, and he's telling the tourists that that's the only island on Loch Ness. So he comes in, and it slows down a bit, and then starts to pull away. And just as he pulls away, is when the dives will come to the surface. And hopefully, there'll be a few people still looking at the island. You happy there? Yeah. yeah. Just to run you through the dimensions of Loch Ness, folks. Well, Loch Ness itself is 23 and a quarter miles long, or 37.4 kilometers. On average, she's just over three quarters of a mile wide, which is 1.2 kilometers. The average depth is 603 feet. That's 183 meters. And the volume is big. Right, you've got two screens up ahead of you here. Now, these are both showing you what's going on underneath the boat. <laughs> that is what Loch Ness would look like if it was empty, all right? There was no water in Loch Ness. That is roughly what we've been looking at right now. Divers ready? Okay. Stand by, just get some gloves on. Divers on three. Three, two, one. Divers in. All oh, that great feeling in the stomach, isn't it? It's all about to happen. I love that. I mean, I'm still nervous. There's always an air of anticipation. You know? sort of adrenaline when you're back to do a mission. I mean, it's just normal. I mean, got so far, you know? Now, ahead of us here on the right-hand side, folks, you'll be able to find the only island in Loch Ness. Divers, one, two, and three. Go for reveal, go for reveal. Go for reveal, go for reveal. What are they looking at? <laughs> What's the 
special there. What? Can you see it? There it is. Oh, oh goodness. What's oh. What's that? What is it? Can you see it? Oh, my God. Oh, it's swimming, whatever it is. They've come back in and they're looking at you right now. You stay where you are. Divers take her down. Well, that's that's great. <laughs> well, that was peculiar. Yes, we sat. She saw the monster. We believe it was a monster. It came up in the lake. She saw her arms. Right. We saw some sort of little head, and then just disappeared. In my experience, eyewitnesses are genuine. Whatever they may be seen, they are, they are genuine. People are not silly. I mean, they, they do know what they saw or what they think they saw. Uh, and they'll often stick to their guns and just say what they, you know, what they believe they saw. My first reaction is, oh, God, there's something there. So a sort of a, a sort of hump in the lock, sort of coming out of the water. And it was a gray green color. Everybody on the boat has seen it, yes. I truly believe in what I saw. I saw something surface from the water. I saw something swim from the water. What we saw was something that was living. It just looked like a classic amphibian head. It was either a wonderfully lifelike hoax, or else it was alive. Eww! Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, ball. <laughs> the boat came have... right back. Oh, 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 there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I thought that was superb. Sneaking about in this boat, I was giggling. <laughs> just watching over the top, watching all these people just stood. Binoculars out, cameras out. Oh, oh yeah. People have seen things in the lock. They've described them to me, and I can't tell those people they didn't see it. I'm just sitting there, just looking, just hoping to see something. And uh, I seen Ricky saying, what the hell is that? So everyone's locked, and I was just, my heart was in my mouth, it's just hard to explain. It went under, and then, like the neck came up and the head was like, t it was just like, wow, what, what's going on here? Like, I wanted to see something, I thought, oh my God, you know, we locked in. Just the buzz that you'll ever get again? No, never. Unique. You know, we're part of the story. The myth, the hoaxes, and, and you know, the rest of my team, and I'm sure the dive team as well. Or now feeling that oh we're, we're part of that now. To be honest, the end result was very very good. In the line of hoaxes that we've seen in the past, people have used things like Labrador dog with a stick in its mouth, three bales of hay covered with tarpaulin sheets. People have gone around it in a how can I say a very primitive and basic way. The way you've done it, it's <laughs> it was uh, very well done, very well done, yeah. There's just one more thing to make this monster hoax complete. So as that was true, it was a hoax, yeah. You were right. I was right, it was a hoax. <laughs> well, I think it's just wonderful to be a part of it. Now, won't it be really interesting if something really does show up? Well, I was convinced. The legend lives on. Yeah. 
Stitched like a kitten. <laughs>